Well, good evening once again. Day 1253 of the Trump administration, 131 days to go until the presidential election. Today, Donald Trump was politicking in the state of Wisconsin as the director of the CDC rep reported that the number of Americans who have been infected with coronavirus is likely 10 times higher than reported. That would put the number well north of 20 million Americans. Over 123,000 people have lost their lives thus far. Tonight, Trump was asked about the impact of the pandemic during a town hall on Fox News, and he once again made the erroneous connection between the rate of testing and the surge in cases. We have more cases because we do the greatest testing. If we didn't do testing, we'd have no cases. When you do 30 million, you're gonna have a kid with the sniffles and they'll say it's uh, coronavirus, whatever you wanna call it. If we didn't do tests, We'd look great. Where but you we? know what? It's not the right thing to do. Treatment vaccine. Where are we? We're going to have an answer very soon. Very soon indeed. I think uh, it will be uh, even before the end of the year. We'll have a vaccine. This virus, of course, is not done with us. And as many health experts and even some officials now note, the numbers in the majority of the states are going in the wrong direction. Right now, over half the states are seeing an increase in new cases, in fact. They've been trending upwards of 30,000 a day for the past week. Yesterday surged north of 40,000. Tonight, we're learning that the White House Coronavirus Task Force will hold a briefing tomorrow. It's rare. It's a first in two months. Last one was on April 27th. NBC News reports the task force has been quietly tracking the rise in cases, even as Trump has been insisting the virus, quote, will go away and will fade away. Indeed, earlier today, two senior administration officials tried to minimize the threat of the latest outbreak. We're working aggressively with states and local leaders uh, in this situation, but it's important for the American people to know this is a localized situation. We're going to have hotspots. There's no question. We just have to live with that. But the economy is not going to be closed down again. Meanwhile, NBC News has learned all Trump 2020 staffers who are in Tulsa for last Saturday's rally are currently working remotely and will be tested for coronavirus before returning to Virginia headquarters. A senior campaign official says they're also doing contra contact tracing. As the nation records more daily infections than ever before, the epicenter of the resurgence right now is in the states of California, Florida, Texas, and Arizona. And let's not forget four states containing well over a quarter of our total population as a country. The Houston Chronicle says Texas reported nearly 6,000 new COVID-19 cases Wednesday. That's the state's highest single day increase. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has paused the state's reopening plans. As of today, he's ordered hospitals in four counties to suspend elective surgeries for starters to preserve hospital space for coronavirus patients. Those counties include the state's largest cities, Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. Hospital admissions have been steadily rising, and the Texas Medical Center in Houston reports its ICUs are now full. Healthcare workers in the state say they're concerned about how they'll handle more patients. Right now, we're finding that, you know, the situation is that we don't have any hospital beds available in the Houston area. We're trying to prepare for this surge and um, we're trying to find ways to be proactive because we want to have enough beds for our patients that need our help. Uptick in, in kind of clusters of patients that were out at bars and clubs over the past two or three weeks. Um, have been coming in in droves, um, testing positive, unfortunately. I am very worried about the upcoming July 4th holiday. One thing that I'd like to see is more masks available everywhere. I haven't seen any public displays of free masks. And at this point in the pandemic, that's something that we should be producing and making available to everyone. So those are folks in the healthcare industry. Arizona today reported 3,056 additional cases of the coronavirus, fourth day in a week in which the state had daily increases of over 3,000. Arizona now has the highest rate of illness on a per capita basis of all the states. 85% of regular hospital beds, 88% of ICU beds are in use for COVID-19 and other patients. Well, today, the governor of Arizona said he expects things to get worse and decided to put a hold on reopening. The rate of the spread of this virus is unacceptable, unacceptable because there is no consideration of increasing activity 
Arizona is on pause. After the heated debate over wearing masks has developed and now shows no signs of going away, despite research backing up prevention, two cities, Charleston, South Carolina, and Miami, Florida, now requiring face coverings in public areas to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Just today, we learned the virus has cost another one and a half million American jobs. This is the 14th straight week that over a million people have filed for unemployment. The news comes as a New York Times Siena poll of six battleground states shows Joe Biden ahead of Donald Trump in all of them. Fox News poll of Florida shows Biden in the lead there. Former vice president was in Lancaster, PA today, where he criticized Trump's response to the pandemic. He thinks that finding out that more Americans are sick will make him look bad. That's what he's worried about. He's worried about looking bad. Well, Donald Trump needs to stop caring about how he looks and start caring about what America is happening to the rest of America. Well, this pandemic didn't happen to him. It happened to all of us. And his job isn't to whine about it. His job is to do something about it, to lead. We're tired of police violence in a country where the Constitution promises equal protection under the law. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. That is why we should act. It's time to end racial profiling, time to criminalize the chokehold, time to demilitarize the police, time to end qualified immunity. That was today in the House of Representatives in the middle of a pandemic. The police chief in Tucson, Arizona, offered to resign on Wednesday while releasing video showing the death of a 27-year-old Latino man in custody. Back on April 21st, officers restrained Carlos Ingram Lopez face down for 12 minutes. Police say they didn't use a chokehold on him. He was not struck with anything by the officers. But the police chief said officers violated training guidelines by restraining him in a prone position face down. Ingram Lopez can be heard on the video asking for water multiple times. Medical examiner said Ingram Lopez died of cardiac arrest while intoxicated by cocaine and being physically restrained. Three officers have resigned from the department. And now one month after the death of George Floyd, tonight the House passed the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. But of course, the bill has a long way to go. Mitch McConnell has nothing like this in mind. He decides what gets to go through the Senate and what makes it all the way to his man, Donald Trump, for signature. Here with us again tonight to talk about all of it, Keith Mays, author, professor of African-American studies at the University of Minnesota. Professor, here we are. We've had people in the streets every day and every night for over a month now. And unbelievably, they have been propelled in new protests in waves by the new cases that have come to light, almost like supplying reinforcements for those people who have fallen back. My question to you is, yes. what have we learned in these days and nights and what has changed? What we've learned, Brian, is that this movement is not going to stop anytime soon. We are marching on all the way to November 3rd. Uh, we will make the necessary changes that have to be made. We will put Joe Biden in office and we will see what the Democrats will do. I'm not confident that we will get any meaningful legislation passed uh, while Donald Trump is in office and while the Republicans hold the Senate. Uh, so, so we'll see. I think we have to rely on the protest movement and the, the grassroots activity that's out there uh, on the streets nationally and internationally. This movement moves, moves forward. It, it continues on. The struggle continues. Reopening was a big risk. We knew that. It was a political and economic calculation and not a medical calculation. I have for you now just a summary, a look back of what went into it. I can tell you on uh, COVID or coronavirus or whatever you want to call it, plenty of names, uh, tremendous progress is being made. 
I spoke with the governor of Texas, where they've done a fantastic job. He's got it in great shape, Texas. Florida's doing very well. Numbers are actually going down. You look at Florida, the state of Florida, did a great job. The numbers are going down very substantially without uh, question. I mean, uh, very powerfully going down. Uh, you look at Florida, they've been open and ver or very substantially open and pretty much completely open in some cases. The job the governor of Florida has done, it's incredible. The numbers they're doing, you've got to open it up. We're doing record numbers. We're doing numbers like nobody's ever seen before, actually. We've made every decision correctly. We've made tremendous progress. We did the right thing. Now we open. We got to get it open. Doctor, he's right about one thing. We're doing numbers nobody's ever seen before. Again, what did they expect? Good to see you, Brian. Let me start here. Let me start here, just nomenclature on testing. What matters here are the number of tests per confirmed case. We can talk about aggregate tests all we want. It doesn't matter. I'm a doc. I'm, I was just in the ICU. I, I still do not qualify for a test, even though I was caring for patients on ventilators with COVID-19. Our tests are still narrowly focused on those who we think are symptomatic or who we think are highly likely to turn positive, which is why the number of tests we do per confirmed case is around 12. You know what Estonia? Estonia does. They do 52 tests per confirmed case. Taiwan, about 90. South Korea, about 90. New Zealand, which has figured this out, 270 tests per confirmed case. That's what matters. So let, for your viewers out there, don't get distracted by what the president or the vice president says. Look at facts that matter. We are narrowly testing. And then yesterday, the president decided to pull funding for community health sites that are doing testing, underserved areas, communities of color, places where we need to know what's happening. He pulled funding for that. So we're not going to have funding in 13 sites that are critical places in Texas that's going through an outbreak. So Brian, there's lots of explanations here, but if I may, speaking to the states, uh, the nation's governors, mandate masks, just like you mandate a ban on indoor smoking. Let's stop with indoor dining. We know there's enough data now suggesting indoor dining is a super spreader event like Tulsa, the Tulsa rally. Let's focus there. Let's increase testing. And for God's sake, let's get some dialysis nurses trained up. Let's get portable ICUs triaged in places like California and Houston. That's what needs to happen. And we're looking to governors to lead because we know the president won't.